How do you take something as noble as the Holy Bible, twist the scriptures in it which are meant for good, and use them to abuse people who are genuinely seeking a relationship with God? How do you get someone like Jim Jones, or a David Koresh, or even close to home the Ugandan massacre caused by a cult? The issue of cults and unhealthy churches is a dangerous phenomenon that should be addressed head-on. In this video, we will take a look at the critical issue of cults and unhealthy churches which is fast becoming a dangerous phenomenon in Africa. We will consider some causes of these groups, their characteristics, and how to guard against such cult-like groups. Without a doubt, there are many persons who are genuinely and faithfully teaching the Bible truthfully and being good examples in many communities around the world yet we cannot overlook the fact that historically, Christianity has been abused in many parts of the world and so Christians always ought to be on guard to discern sound doctrine from false teachings. It is unfortunate to say but there is a strong force of false diabolical teachings spreading like wildfire across churches all over the African continent. Rogue pastors and unhealthy churches across Africa are continually taking advantage of gullible and vulnerable people, being abusive, and ultimately giving Christianity a very bad name. As of the time of making this video, there is yet again another heartbreaking story of a cult massacre being investigated in Kenya with a death toll numbering 90 and still counting. This is sad and highly unacceptable and any well-meaning Christian should be concerned about this. The destruction caused by unhealthy churches that gravitate into cults is very extensive as beyond its tendency to become fatal. People can also be ruined mentally, emotionally, and financially. Even worse some cult survivors reject the gospel altogether and fall into atheism. The reality of false teaching and teachers is not something that should surprise any genuine Christian as the Bible firmly warns us about this in several texts. Beware of false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Matthew 7 verses 15 and 16, Jesus himself warned. In Paul's concluding remarks to the church in Rome, he admonished them. I appeal to you brothers to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught, avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. Romans 16 verses 17 to 18 The cause of this rise of unhealthy cultish churches in Africa can be considered extensively but I would like to give a few factors that have occasioned this. Number 1. Biblically illiterate leaders. Sadly many persons that lead churches across Africa have no or little sound biblical training. Many are of the opinion that they do not need any education to better equip them to serve their potential congregation but rather all they need is God. Undoubtedly, we all need God for any form of pastoral ministry yet it is likewise godly wisdom to educate and develop ourselves constantly to rightly teach the Bible if indeed we want to be faithful to God and not our personal ambitions. Whether in a formal or informal setting of learning, it is only essential to receive guidance from people of integrity before setting out to lead churches. We read about Apollos who was taught by Paul's protégés Priscilla and Aquila. We learn in Acts 18 verses 24 to 25. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Although Apollos was educated and eloquent, his teachings proved a need for further instruction and Priscilla and Aquila informally taught him what he lacked so he would teach more accurately. There is no shame in humbly learning sound doctrine from persons or institutions with integrity rather than doing a trial and error approach which most likely would evolve into unhealthy church practices. Number 2. Wrong Ministry Motives Many persons engage in church work for personal self-centered gains which may include financial gains, achieving power, influence, and other sinister reasons. Most often such are the folks that end up building toxic cultures that only serve their hidden parochial interest. Such is often the genesis of cults. In a simple survey listening to many African preachers, 
it is almost difficult to hear the gospel expressed, but rather what you get is high-minded boastful speeches of their wealth and flamboyant lifestyle which often is funded by manipulative financial schemes instituted in their churches. Thus it is quite easy to realize that many such leaders entered Christian ministry with wrong motives, which is a dangerous thing, as the scriptures say, a man with a crooked heart does not discover good, and one with a dishonest tongue falls into calamity. Proverbs 17, 20. Number 3. Wrong Ministry Mentors. Across the African continent, there is an abundant number of false teachers and most of these are influential and popular with their teaching tapes showing on television channels and social streaming platforms. Many people's assessments of successful ministry borders on large numbers, large finances, and large influence and these characteristics often attract new or young pastors to learn from false teachers who lead them into strange doctrines and practices. False leaders raise other false leaders and likewise, good leaders raise other good leaders so it matters whose protege you become. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. Proverbs 11, 3 these three points form a good part of the bedrock of many unhealthy churches that often drift into becoming cults. Now let us consider a few characteristics of cultish unhealthy churches. Realizing a group may be turning unhealthy and cultish could be difficult in many cases considering the subtle and deceptive ways most operate. It's not always obvious, particularly to folks within the group. Truth be told it does take the Sovereign Lord's help in allowing the blinding scales to fall from a person's eyes to realize the toxic fruits a church group may be producing over time. Here are five key signs of many unhealthy cultish churches. Number 1. Authoritarian and Exclusivist. This comes in many forms and its purpose is to have a controlling access over group members. Elitism is very common here too. There are a sense of we're better than them mentality and in other cases using the dare against us slogan. The idea of being exclusive can evolve often to the point where members are isolated by this group such that there is no access to any alternative objective ideas but all become subjectively dogmatic to the group's doctrine. By being autocratic, the leaders of cultish unhealthy churches assume absolute decision-making powers to exercise manipulative control over members. The leader is always right and never wrong and neither is there room for any constructive criticism however justifiable. Number 2. Exploitation. Members exploitation and manipulation is a constant in unhealthy cultish churches and it comes in varying forms including mainly financial and emotional abuse. Extreme greed underpins all financial demands and the love of money is simply unsatiable with such groups and leaders. Their goals are often sold to the group as being beneficial for all yet documented proof often later suggests that acquired properties are directly or indirectly solely owned by the cult leader. There's always some new project that comes up unexpectedly which requires financial contributions and folks who financially give are promised potential earthly or eternal blessings while the cult leader lavishes in luxurious lifestyles. Beware if your church is constantly introducing new ways to generate money that lack integrity. Spiritual exploitations include abuse of spiritual gifts in many cases. Sexual abuse and other socio-psychological forms of exploitation can be realized in these groups as well since there are no standards of discipline or accountability. Number 3. Leader Worship Leaders of unhealthy cultish churches could even pretend not to desire being worshipped but would never admonish people to refrain from giving them glory and singing their praise. Now, it's basically decent to relate with others in a respectful manner in a church setting but in the unhealthy church's cases, the leader considers themselves higher and better than everyone and hence expects a certain form of reverence to be accorded them and their instructions. In extreme cases, some leaders deny the Lord Jesus because covertly they desire to be God to their followers, whether they admit it or not, their actions would confirm this. Cult members would eventually take on the persona of their cult leaders by imitating their physical looks or mannerism all in a bid to appease the leader. Becoming glory-seeking and self-pleasing, unhealthy leaders relish the applause of men than God and fight to be in the spotlight all the time. Number 4. No Accountability Unhealthy churches and leaders are accountable to no one as the leader who thinks highly of himself considers it demeaning to subject himself and his actions to scrutiny by members. 
character flaws of the leader are overlooked and any attempt to respectfully challenge or examine their actions and instructions is deemed rebellious. People who question such leaders are often branded derogatory names, shamed, and eventually used hypocritically as bad examples for members. People who leave the group are also characterized in a demeaning way. There are often no diligent financial records available even for members. Such leaders very much surround themselves with yes men who become minions and thus they're not subject to any decent counsel, a sure path towards becoming cultish. It is always a red flag when you find yourself in environments where individual critical thinking and questioning is not encouraged. Number 5. Biblical Abuse Although most unhealthy cultish churches would claim to be Bible-believing churches, they will not be Bible-teaching churches. And there is a strong difference there. Such leaders would rarely use scriptures in their right context but would rather twist scriptures to support an idea they're communicating. Twisting scriptures is a common highlight in unhealthy churches and in most cases their members do not have the understanding needed to examine what they hear in context. Leaders would claim either exclusive knowledge or revelation of the Bible as they could be delusional enough to think they are infallible and thus become the arbiter of biblical truth. Their teaching style would very much have extra-biblical revelation that cannot be reconciled with historical biblical doctrine. It's a red flag when preachers rarely read the Bible in its context but rather quote a selected piece and run with it. Watch out! Many characteristics could be mentioned but any of these five should pose a red flag for any discerning Christian. As we conclude, let's turn to a little bit of hope. How can you recognize and avoid unhealthy or cult-like churches? Can we become cult-proof? First, let's begin by emphasizing that no one is immune from being deceived. Cultic deception can come in varying forms and we are all vulnerable to deception. Accepting our vulnerability is the first step to preparing ourselves to become self-aware and conscious of potential avenues of cultish recruitment and indoctrination. Well-meaning people and well-educated people have all suffered from cult deceptions so it doesn't matter if you are elite or not, we're all vulnerable to cults. So accepting our vulnerabilities, becoming self-aware, and educating ourselves on sound biblical truth are key ways to guard ourselves against false doctrine. Another key tool is developing reasonable healthy skepticism like the people of Berea in Acts 17 verse 11. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. If Apostle Paul's teaching was open to scrutiny, no one else's teaching is beyond examination. We ought to be like the Bereans and honorably examine what we hear in line with scriptures in their right context to avoid being taken advantage of by false doctrine. As I conclude, I would like to return to the recent Kenyan Christian cult killings. While this cult existed I bet people who spoke against it would have been branded as bad or disruptive people but now the inevitable harm has been caused and this disaster could have been well avoided. There is definitely a need for more voices to speak up against dangerous unhealthy churches and cults that are becoming a norm in Africa. Just a little time for reflection. Could you be in a cult? Or could your church be a cult or becoming one? Could you be a leader creating a cult unknowingly? Well, we are all not beyond the redemptive grace of God and it's never too late to do the right thing. Christian minister John Piper admonishes us all as he writes. Christians, and shepherds in particular, should be discerning and alert to behavior and teaching that dishonors Christ and destroys people, and not treat it in a casual or harmless way. The best protection against the darkness of error is the light of truth. Thanks for watching and stay grounded in healthy biblical truth. Please like share and subscribe to our channel if you found this video beneficial and see you soon in our next video.